FM. In Miami, Florida, here's what's happening today, just for you. Your community minded station, 560 WQAF, wants you to know what's happening all week long, right here in Miami. Starting this Saturday, the Retard Parade, sponsored and led by the Miami City Commissioners. Then become a sacrifice at Calle Ocho as angry Cubans offer you what the Chupahabra, the Laugh at the Homeless Store, featuring misery, starvation, and other maladies under the 395 overpass. All right. You can leave at 9 a.m. from the burned out section of Liberty City. Don't miss the Miami Day Police Bravo Fest benefit and the grand opening of the new Snack Addict Methadone Center. All this and more in the bedroom town of the world. It's great to be. No. Bluff reminds me this morning of another very important anniversary. Today, I guess, three years of QAM. Because I guess the first show was on December 30th, uh, three years ago. Three years. Well, it seems like what? 20, 30 years? Uh huh. Seems like a lifetime. Oh, those studios aren't going to be ready. Yeah, uh huh. Right. Sure brings back a lot of memories. All of them bad. Real bad. Last minute running around. Oh, did the equipment come in yet from Philadelphia? Did that old rented uh, used crap come in from, uh, yeah, cartons coming in downstairs? George Corso running around like, uh, oh, gee, I got to come in and work again. Remember that day we couldn't get on the air and he didn't want to come over here because, well, his car was in the shop. Things like that. See, I shouldn't be thinking back on all that stuff because it's all bad. Let's move forward, not backward, bluff. Jesus Christ, what the hell is wrong with you, man? Uh, get off this instant. Yeah, get off of that crap. Go take some vacation. Anyway, some interesting facts this morning. First, to our poll from yesterday, big response, especially considering nobody's in town. Which best describes South Florida? Which of these phrases? Find out yesterday that my aunt in Hallandale, with her $45 trillion, that she votes on our poll every day. How do you like that? That was a shocker, Rita. But at any rate... Which best describes South Florida? Third World Banana Republic, 507 out of 802, 63.2%. Say this is a banana republic. And all you can say is... Absolutely correct, sir. Outdoor funeral parlor, 110, 13.7%. Outdoor funeral parlor... Oi! It's reloading. One moment, please. Uh, the Bush League, 100. That was my vote. 12.5%. A tropical paradise, only 85, only 10.5%, far and away the lowest of the category choices that we gave. A tropical paradise. So 10% of the people out there, ignorance is bliss, that you know sums them up very well. And the other 90% of the people are sharp enough to realize that we got some real problems here. You know what I mean? The little bit like that. But anyway, get to the good news. The facts is, oh, and also thanks to Mark Vandermeer, great guy. Thanks to Pete Leonard, to Pete Lenny. Came in with a... Uh, Nice check for Planned Parenthood. And Mark Vandermeer, voice of the Hurricanes, came through with a big fat one and a check, too. Thanks, Mark. What a good guy. Boy, there's a guy he could never, ever, when he left Massachusetts, he could never have expected coming down here what he was getting into, coming to this place. Wow. I'm not just talking about this area, but this station. And he's a good Dutch boy to top it all off. So I'll still believe and the Donkavel and have a great life, Mark. He'll be on the air, by the way, this afternoon, Hurricane Basketball. Have we got some big stuff or what? You thought that Lehigh game was big the other day. Kim Camper for Hank between 2 and uh, 345, and then Hurricane warm-up at 345. Tennessee Martin Skyhawks at the Hurricanes basketball at the Miami Arena at 4 this afternoon. And then you got your Geldy on game night at 6. Panther preview at 7. The new regime, it's not really a new regime, it's temporary. These guys in the morning, are they, are they stupid or uh-huh. not? Jesus, God. One day, let's take a poll on that. Who's the who's the less who's the most clueless? Uh, Greg Kotex at the Herald or Beefo? Beefo's on it this morning. Oh, but the professor, the old professor, Larry Onoff, I mean, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, he sucks. He comes in there this morning during one of their breaks after I went in there and uh, pounded on their window again, giving him a look like, "Are you crazy?" When they were sucking up the bow tie. So it comes in this morning. Oh, you mean the old professor didn't have any more? What do you think? I said, he says he used to be great. I said, yeah, Johnny Bauer used to be great too. That was 40 years ago, Beefo. Poor Beefo. He's just living in the past. One of those old racetrack stumble bums, you know, that's living in the past, talking about races that happened 40 years ago. Bucky Dale by 10 lengths with Francis O'Hare. But anyway, so here's a couple of faxes. First, let's get to the good one. Well, actually, they're both good. 
And it's a copy of a uh, letter that somebody sent to the Herald. See, people keep sending letters to the Herald, the uh, most unctuous, anti-Semitic, obnoxious, virulent newspaper in the history of the human race, thinking that they're going to publish letters, anything that's supportive of me in response to Kevin Bastard's obnoxious column a few days ago. Topical radio is hardly the talk of this town. See, the Herald tried their best, before I read this fact, they tried their best with a fan. They thought that was their one best shot to destroy me and Hank and this whole radio station. Did it work? No. Oh, don't look like it. WAFN Sports leaves the air on Monday. Spanish religious programs begin. Yeah, they're dying over there. They're dead. Stick a fork in them, as somebody I know would say. They be done. The fan. But they gave them front page coverage. They gave them a 750 part series with Barry Jackass just sucking up so heavy duty that his big fat chipmunk cheeks almost inverted. And they still couldn't find an audience. And they're still going uh, out there, and they still couldn't pay the help, and everybody bailed out, and they're uh, going Spanish religion starting on Monday at 1990 on the dial or whatever the hell it is. But they thought that if they could just build them up, oh, yeah, people will just die for an uh, alternative like that. Now, so they put this Kevin Bassett up to write in this stupid puff piece about, oh, yeah, well, we really need topical talk again. If we could just put somebody really serious on the air, we'll get that old <laughs> faggot off the air. You know, we'll give him some competition. You guys just don't get it, do you? You don't get it over there at the Herald. People laugh at you. All over the world, they laugh at you. Anybody that that has ever even read your rag once is on to you immediately, if not sooner. Your virulently anti-Semitic rag. Anyway, so somebody sends this letter. It says, Talk radio throughout America seems dominated by pompous, mean-spirited conservatives. Therefore, it's refreshing to relocate in Miami and encounter some as, uh, someone as lively and refreshing as Neil Rogers, whom I've never called but listened to ardently. Of all the local media I've sampled, his show seems to most accurately take the pulse of the Miami I'm discovering. I particularly enjoy those stupid songs, which strike me as the radio equivalent of political cartoons or Saturday Night Live skits. If you have any quarrel, if I have any quarrel with the show, it's with the callers who generally are less than stellar in articulating their views. Uh -huh. Remember, for great talk, it takes two to tangle. And in Roger's case, all too often the callers are not in the same league with the host, writes Chris in Miami. Thank you, Chris. You think they're going to put that in the paper? No. Just like they didn't put Harvey from Kent. What? Apparently, the fan is already gone. It's already gone? That's what I'm hearing. Oh, it's, already no. the, uh, it's already Spanish uh, religion hoochie uh, coochie? Yes. Oh, no. Well, what, what are all the uh, young sports nerds around here going to do? All the uh, young degenerates? Drugs. Well, we know that. Drugs or uh, eggnog, one or the other. You know something? I saw Tommy in the hall this morning. He was just telling me he is so embarrassed over the fact that we got salespeople come up here on the third floor looking to buy drugs. He, he just mortified by that. Because he says if they keep getting them, it's going to be less for him or something like that. But uh, he's just embarrassed and humiliated. And so are the rest of us upstanding people here at QAM who are nauseated by the fact that some of our folks down there in the sales department just can't get their goddamn ass in line. Cut the crap, guys. So it's a great day for the Irish, unless your name is Murray. Oh! I'll tell you that right now. And you'll notice, I don't want to get back onto that too heavy duty again here today. And there's 80 billion tickets left for the uh, playoff game tomorrow, the Dolphin game. That's going to be blacked out. I'd be in my car right now heading for Fort Myers. We'll get some of our good friends from Fort Myers to call in with the names of some sports bars where you can go over and... Um, Pour down 40 or 50 or 100. Bruise while you're watching that uh, game between the Dolphins and the Colts tomorrow. Blacked out. And I got a fax about that from uh, listeners in New Mexico, no less. We'll get to that. How young is too young? Away. 
And we're still here. A year later, we're still here. All those silly people back a year ago at this time. Oh, what are we going to do? The sky is falling. And it's, uh, first of all, they had the wrong uh, year. Don't confuse them with the facts. But that's beside the point. We got the new millennium coming in. Now we can do it right. Sunday night. So here's a fax from uh, Cindy and Nancy. It says, my co-worker and I, whom both grew up in South Florida, are listening to your show via the Internet out here in the enchanted land of New Mexico. And decided it was our civic... Yesterday we had a fax from Sweden, and today New Mexico. We're really moving up in the world now. Uh Decided it was our civic duty to reply to your comments on why any professional sports event, especially the Dolphin game, would not be sold out. Unfortunately, the average American family would be hard-pressed to spend 64 bucks a ticket, plus parking and the exorbitant cost of a beverage or snack, and still be able to pay the rent at the beginning of the month. Just to contribute to the multimillionaire, drug-addicted, wife, girlfriend, beating, killing, spoiled, rotten, over testosterone, infected, immature, overgrown three-year-olds, and the owners who continue to support these lovely habits. Things were different when the ticket prices were 8 to 10 bucks, and we didn't routinely hear about the players being arrested for a variety of misconducts. It isn't really difficult to explain the problems of society when we're willing to pay these people what they're paid, but can't seem to find the resources to pay a police officer or a teacher an acceptable salary. Acceptable being one that would afford them the luxury of being able to attend a professional sports event such as the Dolphin game. Also, why would someone feel compelled to support a team that may end up moving halfway across the country when they don't get their new stadium, such as with the case with the formerly known Los Angeles Rams and or the Baltimore Colts, Houston Oilers, St. Louis Cardinals, etc.? Please feel free to use any of my comments on your show. However, I doubt you will do so because I'm sure this is not what you want to hear. Signed, Cindy and Nancy. They got her last names on here from New Mexico. Now, why would they say that? It's not what I want to hear. They don't get it. Like most of the audience, they don't get it. Am I chewing people out because of the fact that uh, they're not subsidizing sports teams? No. no didn't I read Max Castro's uh, parts of it twice on the air this week from the Herald, his great column? about there's more important things than building stadiums and arenas and going to, and supporting sports franchises. The only reason I mention the fact that uh, they got 12,000 unsold tickets for the game tomorrow is, first of all, it's a playoff game, and secondly, it just it just continues to show you what a Bush League town this is. It, but it, it's Whether it's uh, civic events, whether it's politics, elections, no matter what it is, this town doesn't support anything. So evidently, Cindy and Nancy, you missed the point. And no, it's not really a big deal that a, that a Dolphin game or any other sporting event isn't sold out, but it's just symptomatic of an illness that uh, runs rampant through this town. There's no passion here for anything, whether it's serious, supercilious, you name it. There's just no passion. Now, how about some free tickets? Oh, that business here yesterday, that was just, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I enjoy it. I love it. All you masochists out there, oh, come on, Neil, we know you're hiding some tickets. Yeah, how come we can't give away all these? I mean, this is the Dolphin Station. You know that we got a bunch of Dolphin Colts uh, playoff tickets stashed around all over this place. Ray Perry's probably got them stuck in his Rectum. under his armpit all over the place. They're they're laying on the floor in the hallway. We got so many. I think we have a ton for that Micron PC bowl. Oh, that's too late. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So here's our poll today for the over the weekend. Something for you to chew on over New Year's weekend. The biggest problem with South Florida, this is picking up kind of like a sequel to the one from yesterday. The biggest problem with South Florida is crooked politicians, apathetic citizens, too many refugees, or too many old farts. What another sensational poll by yours truly, if I do say so myself. The biggest problem with South Florida is crooked politicians, apathetic citizens, too many refugees, or too many old farts. So I had an interesting uh, episode happen to me yesterday. I just mentioned this in passing. You were here. You observed that uh, one of our sales holes, I don't want to mention Todd Dreck on the air, came in here pop, 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 and give me a big song and dance about some spots he wants me to do on the air for him. And I agreed. But it wasn't just the fact that he was, like, putting the uh, the old squeeze on and the big pressure, but the fact that he's become a little bit too chummy. You know what I'm talking about? And, it, it, no, when we got out there in the hallway and Bluff came out and was listening to the conversation, and at that point, when I had agreed to do the spots, which means a lot of money in the Todd Rex pocket, a lot of commission, and he became so euphoric that he kind of, like, reached out and, like, started to give me a squeeze. And I said, don't touch. Don't touch. Now, this is a topic that, I, for whatever reason, that just slips my mind, because many times I've, uh, oh, A&W was what I was trying to think of before, Joe, A&W, with the, with the uh, curb service. Yeah, A&W drive throughs But at any rate, that's just, well, it just popped in my mind. It's like one of those things you're trying to think of, and then, like, uh, in the middle of the night, you wake up, oh, yeah, it was A&W, uh, uh, whatever. Not A&W root beer, but the A&W uh, 
fast food stands with the mama burger and the papa burger and all that those other things. Isn't that right? I'm glad you didn't think of it like four in the morning. No. You called me up. No, it's important stuff, so it's right here in the middle of the show. So anyway, I mentioned Todd Rick, uh, you know, is starting to give me a big squeeze. And I don't know about you, but there are different kind of people. Now, there are most people who know me would probably say, although they wouldn't say it to my face, they probably would say, oh, that Neil, he's a cold fish. He's just not, uh, he's not a warm guy. Which means that they probably just have never gotten close enough or they just don't look too good. But at any rate, no, no, seriously, there are, there are those people, touchy-feely people, I call them. I don't like touchy-feely people. I don't like people who gratuitously, and I shouldn't say I don't like people because then we'll get George into this again, and I like George, but it's, you know, it's Rip George Week anyway, he's on vacation. No, but he is one of those people who is, and especially if it's a female, but not necessarily, runs up to people if he hasn't seen them in like more than 10 minutes, and hugging and squeezing. See, to me, I just, uh, I just don't get that. You know what I'm talking about. Now, are you like that? Are you like, um, no. No. Most people are not. I mean, I could imagine if it was like an old friend I hadn't seen in 20 years or something. Or I'll give you a classic example. When I Hand met, uh, when I met, uh, what's his name from, uh, used to be Rocky Echeverria, Stephen Bauer. You know Rocky Echeverria from, uh, Que Pasa USA? Or Stephen Bauer? It's the yeah. same guy. He what changed else? his name to protect the innocent. Well, at any rate, I had talked about him on the air for a long time because he used to be, look really good back in those Que Pasa USA days. But he's from here. And he began listening to the show. So I met him at a Panther game years ago at the old Miami Arena. I'd never seen a guy before in my life. And when we were introduced, we both like gave a big hug like we were long-lost best friends. Don't ask me why, but it was spontaneous. And he's a pretty good guy in spite of his drug problems. But he's a good guy. What? But that's just not commonplace for me to do that. For example, when we had the thing at the pizza loft that night. Okay? Now, everybody who came up to the table who was known to us, I'm not talking about listeners, but George immediately came rushing out from behind the table and squeezing and hugging and dancing like Arthur and Catherine Murray or Brian and Terry Murray. You saw that. You were there. Oh, yeah. I don't do that. I mean, when, when we were all leaving and I gave uh, Janine a little kiss on the cheek, good night, nice to see you. But I, I'm just not one of those people. Who, if I saw you yesterday, there isn't any need for me to come up and give you a big squeeze and a hug. In fact, if I come up to you and give you a big squeeze and a hug, I'd start getting nervous if I were you. You know what I'm talking about? Because when I, no, when I do that, it's usually meant with uh, tremendous emotion and uh, something in mind. Right. Believe me, I can become very emotional, but only under the proper circumstances with the right people, which we don't have any of those people in this building. Sorry, Miguel, but we just, they're not here. No, not even Miguel. But uh, you know what I'm talking about. I find that just, uh, it leaves me cold, I, I, because you can only feel that strongly about so many people unless you're just madly in love with the human race, unless you love everybody. You know what I'm talking about. And that's not even as bad as the Todd Greck squeezing, massaging that he does. No, because, uh, I mean, I don't dislike him. He's come a long way. He's almost a human being now, especially compared to the rest of the crowd on there in sales. But uh, he's just, he's not uh, somebody that I want to squeeze and hug and uh, touch. I don't want to touch him. Shake his hand, sure, happy holidays, have a great life, get away from me fast, but I don't want to touch him. And the touchy-feely crowd, man, those people are just, uh, oh, I run. I just run away. People that you barely even know, and they're hugging and squeezing. Just uh, go touch something. Go pet your dog, you know. Go touch a blow-up doll. Just don't touch me. If I want to touch you, believe me, I'll let you. And, of course, the people that I do want to touch, most of them, they're smart enough to stay very far away, you know. Anyway, I just mentioned that in passing. It's something we never talked about on the show, and it just uh, had that episode with Todd Dreck yesterday. Don't touch me, Todd. Stay away. You're okay. I'll do your spots. Don't touch. What about Fat Boy? What about him? You want to touch him? Just be happy. He, he's not like that. Oh. First of all, he can never get close enough to touch. How could you give that a hug? Be like trying to hug Mount Rushmore. It's kind of, kind of hard to get a grip on it. Here's a mobile in West Palm Beach. Hello. How you doing, Neil? Happy New Year, sir. Same to you. It's a great day in South Florida. It looks like Baldy's team is going to sell for less than he wants. The Murrays are gone. The Dolphins are blacked out. Yeah. And Mario is back. Yeah. And I think it's a great day, Neil. Have a good holiday. Okay. Happy circus to you. There's a guy with uh, some needs some serious help. And I'm going to play a lot of stuff today because it is our last show of the year. It's our third anniversary of QAM, which, of course, has no significance at all. And, of course, we got the Bruins game tonight. I'm going to go to the game, I think. I'm thinking about it. 
Now that we got rid of the Murrays, I think I'm going to just took me one game of boycotting, and they blew the whole organization out. See that? I'll take full credit for it. Yeah. And believe me, I don't want I don't want to give you any hints, but there are, there are stories that there are a lot of players on that team who are just kissing the ground. That TM is gone. They are just delirious that he's gone. Hated him like poison. And Greg Kotex over to Harold. I want to say this. That's a match made in heaven. He wrote a column so stupid this morning that I won't even waste the time reading from it or talking about it. I just want to make sure that he understands that I did read it. And believe me, it's so typical of you. He you've got no clue. You're clueless. And you work for the perfect newspaper. You and the Herald, those Farbis and the Graham, you're a match made in purgatory. Greg Kotex. Clueless. Here's a mobile in Boynton Beach. Hello. Hey, Neil. Happy New Year. Same to you. Hey, two, a couple of things. Um, number one, I, I agree with you. There is uh, very little passion in the city of Miami. Oh. I've grown up here my whole life. This place and is as cold as an iceberg in spite of all the warm weather. I, I know. And, and the other thing is, I, on your poll, um, I think you should add all of the above. Yeah, but that's no fun. We want to, we want to put people on the spot, make them uh, you know, come up with one. <laughs> it's kind of hard to come up with one. I know. That's the idea. That's why we would like uh, you know put their mind to work a little bit here. Okay, well, Which listen, happy new year. Off. And the same to you, sir. How come we don't have any calls from Fort Myers with some sports bars over there on the West Coast? I'm sure we got a lot of people tomorrow morning, bright and early, going to be heading on up the old Hershey Highway or across the alley to try to find a sports bar place they can hang out and see the Dolphin game because it will be blacked out tomorrow. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. And for our lady friends out there in New Mexico, it's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world, but it just, it just adds. I mean, we just had the election embarrassment and the alien embarrassment and the crappy schools and the kids going to schools in Quonset huts and without textbooks and without computers and all, the, all of these things. And the backdoor deals with the crooked politicians. And so here's just one more chapter in a very sad tale. 1031 560 QAM 5670560 pound 560 on your AT&T wireless line. We're taking your request. We're playing the best Neil, and we're having one heck of a day. I am above the law. Hey, sounds that you hate. But I'm an idiot, and I think they're really great. I doubt that you can handle one or two, much less all eight. Eight sounds that you hate. The men from the boys, they will surely separate. I'll tell you what they are. Guaranteed you'll go. I like fingernails on a blackboard. People crack their necks for their knuckles. When I run, I will fall together. That just makes me shut up. <laughs> hey, sound you can't stand. Which you could tolerate if you were half the man I am. And to the list of eight. A fork and a knife. Scraping on a plate. Scraping on a plate. Here's one I really love You might want to try it Give me feedback in my headphones Oh yeah, that's more like it Little more Little more Little more Hey, sounds so unique now let's review so you can really, really free. Figure nails on a <laughs> When people crack their necks for their knuckles, rub and styrofoam together. Cause it makes me chuckle. I like brand new sneakers on a gym floor. Raging in a room and a window. Yes, it's the drilling my molars. That make me say bingo. My boy singing on this record. You take the hold on by China. If these sounds give you the shivers, that make you a whiner. Hey, do you know nuts if someone bites their fork like this? Cause I love it. Here, I'll do it again. Do you have a nervous system left? 
How about the squeegee wiper your window while I crack my neck? Suffering <laughs> <laughs> whip! Suffering whip! Oh, wait! I got one more! Mr. Al Goldstein presents the art of taking a dump. Oh, what I like to do is place a TV tray in front of me when I go. Uh, gives me a way of expediting the food I enjoy. Oh, I had my cornflakes today. Mm. Corn is good, it goes right through. Mm. It also helps to have a few pictures of Gloria Leonard around. <laughs> but what I truly enjoy is the luxury of bathroom acoustics. I always keep a karaoke machine nearby. This way I can enjoy the acoustics when I sing. Farting, pooping, and splatting, and spooping, spewing, and spraying, and straining my heart. Don't care if it's real or a thought. So when you have to make don't hold it in. When I gotta do I'm fishing with them boobies. Best doing it with my boobies. Yeah, and if I feel good when I'm through, that's a healthy s***. That's a healthy s***. She can get on her knees and do what she likes. She can do you in high heels with six inch high spikes. You'd like her to reveal what she has underneath. Spank her butt like a child, cause she's always a tall girl to me. Under covers with sky, she's a cute little little girl. She'll take a test of little check, not the card or the visa. She'll call up your wife if you can't pay her fee. She'll blackmail your blind, but she's always a call girl to me. Kill politicians with candid affection. If they say in Chinese you might hold an erection. While your front page and tab watch you on her shopping spree. Lay her her first cat cooker, but that sounds like a call girl to me. As the staple of MSNBC News. And now, the long awaited CD is here. The Ramsey sing their favorite Beach Boy hits. Well, we're not bragging, but we killed our daughter and had enough money to bribe the authorities with plenty left over if we should decide to kill again. Left the no to show we don't know who. Rock a skull in in her room. I shall rather with her eyes in her room. Get the tickets for the flight. Pack the bags. Not much time. You know, France won't expedite. Which bastard? 
My bitch, why? Yes, it's the Ramses, singing their favorite Beach Boy hit. Now available from Guilty Pleasure Records. My dad knocks me off. He makes me when he ties me up. When I was on the day Ramsey, I was killed by my daddy. Oh, my dad knocked me off. I was a bit of a queenie. Listen to me, this is Stan Feinstein for Sofa King, you understand? Where everything is held to the high Sofa King standards. The selection isn't just huge, it's Sofa King huge. Believe me, you'll never shop anywhere else. And Sofa King's prices aren't just low, they're Sofa King low. You'll never find them anywhere else. Listen to me. When I say Sofa King has a beautiful store, I mean Sofa King beautiful. When I say the staff is helpful, I mean Sofa King helpful. Listen to me. Get to know the Sofa King and enjoy a selection that's Sofa King huge. A staff that's Sofa King courteous and prices that are Sofa King low. You'll never shop anywhere else. But don't take it from me. Take it from satisfied customer Frank and Stein. Uh, Sofa King good. You said it, Frankie. Sofa King good. I don't need to start a sentence or disrespectful, but if you walk in the control room and see Neil Rogers, it, it appears as though he should have wheels on both sides of his chair, okay? I mean, he's sitting there, like, crouched down. He He's so forceful on the radio, and he's such a little, like, if, if he doesn't have a bodyguard when he leaves the radio station, good luck to him. They're blunt, dumb, and not a brain between them. And they're on Saturday morning tune down. It's Cruddy Spice, Nutty Spice, Bitchy Spice, and Monica, and they're the Spice Squirrels. So all you slutty little girls out there, remember to turn on the Spice Squirrels. Every Saturday morning. You'll love it. Join the Spice Squirrels every Saturday morning. Holy Mackinac! This is Joe Bow and the voice of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and you're listening to the Hockey Authority, Neil God. This one, to let all you people know how a stoner feel. You know, real high. But you pass the brownies. Look at that pot so glorious, and the agent I know was curious, so I asked my mom for some cannabis, to smoke before school on the bus. Got my friends to love the pot, every day of and out, we just can't stop. One day we even toast up at the top, smoking a big fat hookah, say I plant my seeds, 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 for my weed, 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 and the shit was free, free, free. Gonna run again, say I plant my seeds, 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 for my weed, 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 for my bong. Let me smoke that bomb, baby, that bomb, ba bomb, bomb, bomb. I love it when I smoke the bomb, just like Cheech and Chong, yeah, yeah, that bomb, ba bomb, bomb, bomb. Look at that pot so glorious, that the age of nine I was curious, so I asked my mom for some cannabis, she to smoke before school on the bus. Got my friends to love the pot, every day of and out, we just can't stop. One day we even choked up with the cop, smoking a big fat hookah. Say I plant my seeds, 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 for my weed, 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 and shit, we're free, free, free. Gonna roll it again, say I plant my seeds, 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 for my weed, 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 for my bong. Let me smoke that bong, baby. That bong, the bong, bong, bong. I love when I smoke the bong. Just like Cheech and Chong. Yeah, yeah. That bong, the bong, bong, bong. Hey, Jimmy, man. Yeah, yeah, pass that right over here. <coughs> oh, yeah. That's so good. Oh. 
Let's see. Anybody want some eggnog? That's our question. We have no tickets for you today, but we have lots of eggnog. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Hi. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, how you doing today? Excellent. Yeah, listen, I wanted to ask you, how come every time we have a census report, all those slime holes up in the Northeast lose population, all those wonderful places to be like New York and Boston? Yeah. Yeah, because the bad news is they're coming down here so they can uh, join up with you. You should only wish that they would let you into New York or Boston, loser. See, this this really cracks me up when people uh, here start putting the knock on any place else. You could be knocking Waterloo, Iowa, and I'd have to raise three eyebrows at that point. Here's a mobile in Boca. Hello. Hey, Neil. Good morning. How are you? Buenos dias to you. Happy and healthy New Year to you. Same to you. Hey, I'm so glad they got rid of that stiff Terry Murray and I guess his big brother, too. I mean, that guy always looked like he had a bad wife or something. Uh He was the worst. And I think one of the worst things he ever said or did was when he complained about Pavel losing his temper and showing his emotions on the bench. Yeah. What the hell's wrong with that? Well, he had something bad to say about everybody, Trevor Kidd, which that, that's what really pissed me off. Oh, Not God. Trevor Kidd, who stood on his head and had no support from this organization, from this team, the whole time he's been here. I mean, that was just the epitome of what a slimeball low-life uh, Terry Murray was. And, yeah, you, and let me say it again. The players, almost to a man, there may have been a couple of exceptions, I'm sure. players hated him like poison. What do you think? You think Luongo has a chance to be a good goalie? Yeah, if they ever, if, sir, if they ever score any goals for him, he'll be just fine and have a great New Year. I'll tell you one thing: it ain't going to be hockey talk today. This time it comes in front. There's it got it away in the middle of the top of the goal. Got it in front of the net. Was hooked by it. And Taylor was knocked down. And now out comes Corlett as they will shoot it deep into the end zone. Back of the net goes Cavalier with less than a minute to go, and now Joseph looking for the bench, and out comes Barrison. Barrison the blind and gets in. Am I pumped up for tomorrow night or what? Uh-huh. Man, I may have to go tonight just for practice. For getting all wound up for that big Leafs Panther game tomorrow night. Anybody want any tickets for that game? Uh-huh. <laughs> Here's a mobile in Coral Springs. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Sensational, sir. Listen, a happy new year and a healthy one. Likewise. And and also, I've been listening to you since you were on WKAT. Yeah. Uh, for a long time, I call you about uh, I call you about oh maybe once or twice a year. Uh, but you got a fantastic program. I really enjoy it. I just want to make one other quick statement. Yes. I, I'm certainly glad that the Miami Dolphins game is blacked out. Why I is think that? they're all I think they're all a bunch of spoiled brats. They're overpaid brats. Okay, thanks for the good news. See what sour pusses we got here. It's, it's New Year's time. It's the holidays. It's right on Hanukkah and Christmas and all, all this stuff lumped together. Sour, bitter, nasty people. Nasty, hostile. Why should you be glad the game is blacked out? I don't understand that. I mean, I'm not going to have a nervous breakdown about it one way or another, especially me. Because where there's a, you know, will there's a way, where, how does that go? But nevertheless... But, I mean, the fact is that uh, why should you be happy about it, you miserable piece of turd, you? I'm delighted that it's blacked out. This is Ebenezer Scrooge Day here at QAM. Let's hear from all you old fossils like that old guy from Hollywood. All you old people, all the people older than me, except my mother and maybe other relatives like one, but other than that, get on a bus, go away, unless you're a nice person, which I doubt. In fact, I will decide. Oh, seriously, I have some neighbors like Bernie and Dolores across the street. They're very nice. They're older than I am, but they're nice. They can stay. Thank you, Neil. You're welcome. And they're Panther fans. But but, but I'll pick maybe, maybe how many? A thousand? A thousand old people can stay. Everybody else, you're out. You're out. If you're older than me, which is a 58, if you're over, over 58 and you're a miserable old fart, which probably you are, you're out. Bye-bye. We wish you all the luck in the world. Because I'm the one that's making up the rules now, okay? Too many decrepit, disgusting, miserable, unhappy, nasty old farts. Uh Uh-oh, that sounds like that poll question. How come it's not on here, Eric? I don't want to put pressure on Eric, but I can't wait to vote. Here's a lady in Fort Myers. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, ma'am. Hey, go to uh, Stevie Tomato Sports page, the great bar in Fort Myers to watch the game. They have good food, too. Where is it? It's right near Pagefield, the old airport in Fort Myers. Uh, Which exit did they get off at? 22, Colonial. Okay. And then go down to 41 and take a right on 41, which is Cleveland. And uh, down there on your right. Okay. And they can have my cable because I'm on my way to Atlanta. All right. Thanks a lot, sweetheart. Thanks. 
Have a happy. So there you go. There's a place for you to go for uh, tomorrow over to Fort Myers. So you can go over, drive over to Sarasota. You can drive up to Tampa. You can go up to Orlando. You can go up to Jacksonville. You can go to Atlanta with this lady from Fort Myers. But you're not going to see it here unless maybe you got some other kind of, like, special dish. What are you laughing about? Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Great. Happy New Year. Same to you. Um, I need Charles Alfieri's phone number. I haven't heard the spots anymore. Uh, is there any way you can give that to me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, that, that's all I need. I just want to wish you a Happy New Year and uh, and for Charles' number. Charles' number. 1-800-321-2413. Thanks, man. You got it. Bye. Go get some here. Here's a mobile in Hallandale. Hello. Yeah, Neil, good morning. Happy yes, sir. New Year. And same to you. Okay, I'm on my way over to my mother's in Hallandale, the, the home of your best buddy, Arthur M. Sonny Rosenberg. Oi! The best. Let me, let me tell you what happened. When they started this whole alien mess, I used to subscribe to the Herald. And when they came out and they were talking about all this nonsense about aliens staying here in the midst, and I said to myself as a father of four, this is absolutely the last straw. I canceled my subscription. And you know, Neil, never again am I going to buy that paper again. Yeah. I'm, d- I'm done with them. Forget about it. So don't be surprised about anything they do. They're a cancer on this town. Oh, man, they are the worst. I've been living here as long as you have. I've followed you from station to station. I, lo- I've, I agree basically very little with what you say, but I think you're a great entertainer. I love you. You make a lot of sense. I don't agree with a lot of it, but a lot of it I do agree with. But as far as the Herald, man, you're right on top. You're right top side of that thing. Okay. Have a good day and enjoy the New Year. Just say no to the Herald. <laughs> you're right. Bye. Okay. Have a happy, sir. 21 before 11 at 560 WQM. Maybe we'll hear from somebody under the age of 100 before the day is out, but I doubt it. What is it? Say the poll one more time. He was out. Now he's back. He was out? Well, you better get with it, Eric. He was probably out in the kitchen filling his fat puss. Probably. See, he's one fat guy that don't mind being called fat because he knows that he's fat. He looks in the mirror in the morning and says, oh, boy, am I fat. But there are some fat people who take offense when you call them fat. You know what I'm talking about? Anyway, our poll today, the biggest problem with South Florida is crooked politicians, apathetic citizens, too many refugees, or too many old farts. One more time for the West Coast. The biggest problem with South Florida is crooked politicians, apathetic citizens, too many refugees, or too many old farts. You're listening to the best of Neil Rogers on 560 QAM. 560 WQAM. Are we copacetic? Do you get a hold of our friends or not? I didn't call him yet. Well, you better get with it. I'm about to. He's not going to hop on that Vespa and come flying over here in like two seconds just when you snap your fingers over ponytail. He's not. Yeah, he will. Anyway, for a free plug, he'll do just about anything because at least he spends a lot of money on our show and has for like uh, about 100 years and good friend and good sponsor. Unlike some people, of course, who expect free plugs who never spend a dime. I don't want to at this holiday time of the year start ripping into anybody just to please you. But, you you know, you made a point of saying you forgot to rip those guys two days in a row. And I wouldn't wonder, you know, why should I do that to Scott and Ira? I mean, you know, just because those cold cuts uh, tend to be a little on the fatty side. What are you laughing about? You ate a lot of free food from there. Why are you smirking about all of this? You're the instigator, just like that poll about George. You like to instigate. You like to needle from behind the scenes, and then you smile like, you know, just like the thing about huggy and touchy and feely. You ought to hear what he was saying about George off the year. That's it was all true, though. True. It was all true. And what? I think the audience knows that. What? And people who know me certainly know that I'm not like that. Like what? Exactly. You like to instigate a little bit. Don't deny it. You know, in that touchy-feely thing, you're absolutely right. Darting over to people, just grabbing and squeezing like uh, he hasn't had any uh, human, uh, you know, maybe it's he just ain't feminine. getting as much as he tells it's everybody. It's feminine. I said that. It's very, see, now, I didn't even repeat that, and you're going out of your way well, to say I'm, that. I'm you said it's a feminine thing. Yes, it is. Well, thank God I don't do that. That's one of the unfeminine things that I do. I don't go running up to everybody squeezing and hugging. Women do that, yeah, when they see each other. Women, uh, much more than men. Real men don't squeeze and hug unless uh, they mean it. Uh, that's common knowledge. That's why I don't have a problem. Which is why a lot of these pansy athletes I find very, very effeminate because that whole, I mean, butt slap and especially that, that, uh, rectum slapping a real faggy thing, if you ask me. And believe me, I'm, I'm the guy who could tell you. Anyway, moving right along. Here's a mobile in Hollywood. Hello. 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 Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing, Neil? Great. Listen, um, I, was, I heard your poll question this morning. I moved out of this town about six years ago and went back to Seattle. But I'm here just visiting my parents on oh, the weekend. Oh, lucky guy. But for me personally, I mean, the reason why I moved back is because of all the damn refugees. Yeah. But, but on, uh, Too many been, refugees, huh? Yeah, it was just a little too uh, and too intense down here. But uh, on that poll, I mean... um. On the Panthers thing, yeah, I'm, I, you know, I, I, you know, I've been following. I have my hockey fan. I've been following it, but um, 
And we could sure use the Panthers up there in Washington. We we need a hockey team up there. You guys don't uh, don't seem to appreciate anybody down here, any sports no, or anything. No, they they don't. They're this listen, I was telling Joe before the show today. As much of a fan as I am, as you know, I'm the biggest hockey fan in this town. Right. But the fact is, this, hockey in this town is like trying to sell bagels in the North Pole. It, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> there are no hockey fans here. There may be 500 of us, and the rest of these people are just going to kill some time. This is not a place for a hockey team. In fact, this isn't a place for professional sports when you come right down to it. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. And, and really, I, I mean, I, can't, uh, I was just listening to. Uh, you guys haven't even sold out your playoff game. I, I would say maybe cockfights, you know, can survive yeah. here for many generations to come. But other than that, I mean, baseball, forget it. And the Dolphins can't even sell out a playoff game, which is the first time in six years in the whole league that there's a playoff game that's going to go unsold. And it's embarrassing. Yeah, it is. I mean, you guys had enough problems lately with the Ilion thing and the, the voting for yeah. the morons. Pregnant change. <laughs> yeah. Well, I used to listen to you all the time. I think you're great. Thanks a lot, um, Al. I can't wait to get out of here, though. I don't blame you. Have a, have a happy. <laughs> you too, man. Good luck to you. See, there's another guy. He got out, which makes us feel really bad because we're stuck here except for those uh, 80 weeks a year that I have vacation in Amsterdam. What? He's not there? Is that what you're going to tell me? That's what I'm going to tell you. But oh, they're, no. They're paging him. Oh. Because he's on his way in or something. Oh, he, then he'll take care of us. Old ponytail. In fact, he's probably listening right now, don't you think so? No. Or he's probably like uh, shacked up in the backseat of his car, pulled over on the side of the road with somebody. Anything that moves. There's another one, boy. Anything that moves. Or maybe just uh, Jeff and George are, like, you know, hugging him. That emoting. rumor you just started. Well, you're the one that said George was effeminate. Anyway, here's another. Didn't you just get through saying that? No. Well, you certainly uh, intimated that. Something about being too intimate. That one aspect of his personality. Yes. Yeah. Too much squeezing and hugging. And bad for your image, George. Cindy and Nancy from New Mexico and other facts which I'm delighted that they're listening. This is exciting. We had a fax from Sweden yesterday, and now two from New Mexico on the same day. Dear Diary, plus the Leafs are in town. How you doing, Joe and Harry and Nicole and uh, who else? And Grapes. They're all here, maybe. And Pat Quinn. Straighten those guys. Whip them into shape, Pat. Let's cut the crap, okay? Enough of this uh, lollygagging around or whatever they call it up there, eh? So this one says, thanks for replying to the facts we sent yesterday. We do understand the point is that Miami is a second-rate city and can't fill the stadium. That's right, Cindy and Nancy. And the Danny and the Jimmy. We grew up going to Dolphin games, and even back then, a lot of the games were not sellouts. At that time, people said it was because there were so many other things to do in my mirror instead of going to the games. I'm not sure if that's the case now or not. Well, no. no, it's not. After further thought about why the game is not sold, I was starting to wonder if the game would be a sellout if the Dolphins were playing better than they had the last few weeks. No, it would not. And would it be a sellout if Dan Marino was still a quarterback? No. No. You are correct. It'll be embarrassing that a playoff game is not a sellout in time for the blackout to be lifted. And we suppose that the sports bars will be the ones making money on Saturday. Absolutely correct, Cindy and Nancy, and have a great new year. The sports bars, well, that's good for the economy. And it's certainly good for WQAM that the game will be blacked out. In fact, you know, something I think the guy to call before is right. We should be celebrating. Because why not be like everybody else? We should be selfish. That's what it's supposed to be in this town. You get a lot of free stuff, which we now specialize in. We're the leaders in that and proud of it. We're going to have free lunch coming very shortly. But uh, why the hell not be happy about that? Everybody that wants to follow this game, they'll be listening to 560 WQAM or else. So how do you like that? Well, what do you, what's that? Or Power 96. Oh. Yeah, but we get credit for that too, I believe. I think that's the way they had that rigged up. They don't need the help over there with 100,000 watts FM, with that little jukebox they got down the hall with that kid scurvy. They don't need any extra help. We need all the credit we can get here on 560. That's what Bluff said. He said, be sure and mark down you're listening to the game on 560 QAM. Yeah, get off this instant. Right. Because we need the help immediately, if not sooner. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Especially after the last two Hello? turns. Yes, sir. Hi. Hey, good afternoon. Good evening. Calling for some tickets. You got some tickets for me? Tickets to what? Backstreet Boys? No. No, for the hockey game. I want to see a real hockey team tomorrow night. Yeah. Well, the way that the Leafs are playing right now, I wouldn't be too sure, so I don't think you want to see that game. We don't have any tickets. Will you people stop demeaning yourself? Will you stop groveling? I can't stand groveling. Makes me sick to my stomach. I don't mind groveling if it's for something really good. And believe me, none of you are it. But uh, this business of groveling for tickets. Jesus, don't you have any shame or self-respect at all? No. None? I mean, all I'm going to do is, like, demean you and make a jackass out of you, which a lot of you love that. That one's far to that call yesterday. That was giving me a song and a dance about his 85 kids or whatever it was, which was pretty believable. He said he was trying to outdo uh, Evander Holy Molyfield or some crap like that. That guy, he loved it when I was uh, telling him about that big uh, round building over there up on the corner. 
where they have those. T- when I drove to work this morning, come by there, I made a special point. I slowed down and took a peek. They were lined up by the ones and twos to buy those dolphin tickets. And at that rate, now we got an hour and 40 minutes to go, so I'm assuming since this is your dolphin station, although they never, see, they're really tight-lipped over there. That's Fudge Pack and Brown and all those other people. That's our Bisson Dolphin Organization. They're the worst. But they never will tell you how many tickets are left. But I'm assuming since the NFL extended the deadline until 1230, there is no chance that the tickets will be sold out by then and no chance that enough will be sold that Channel 10 can afford to pick up the rest, that it will be blacked out. It's pretty damn, uh, they're expecting that. But wouldn't you think we'd get the official word by 1230 today? No. No? They are tight-lipped over there. Bunch of real, real goyim. Here's Miami. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Good morning. What is it? Hello. Yeah, uh... I listen to your show, and I also used to listen to the fan. And uh, I like. Oh, you were the one, huh? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and you know, I guess uh, I'm probably gonna listen uh, to QAM more. I guess since the fan is gone. <laughs> there you go. Excellent, Bob. You don't have much choice now, man. <laughs> yeah. We got you whether you like it or not. <laughs> but uh, listen. Uh, yes, sir. On that poll you have. Yeah. I just say immigrants, man. Immigrants don't care nothing about sports. There's too many immigrants out here. The other thing they care about is politics. And as we've uh, that's how, yeah, that's how George Bush got, and uh, ended up winning uh, Florida because right. of all these uh, Cubans here, uh, you know, voting for him. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I don't. This is this is a real problem with my too many immigrants. They too don't care about sports. Too many refugees. Yeah. <laughs> okay, pal, you hang in there. Have a happy New Year. Oh, uh, you too. All right. Okay, let's see. I'm going to vote on my poll right now. You know, what I'm going to vote. Uh, uh, if I can get my cursor on it, God damn it! I voted for too many old farts. See, because apathetic citizens is covered under that. That's uh, one of the reasons we got too many uh, dead people walking around. They don't give a crap about anything. They don't care about the schools. They don't care about young people. They just want to make sure that you're as miserable as they are. That's what they live for. That's what they take great delight in. That's why they're out there in their big goddamn Jew canoes driving around there with their uh, battleships, blocking off every lane in the highway. Yeah, that's right. Every time you see somebody in a Cadillac, I'm going to tell you right now, it's either some old Jew or some Schwarzer. And generally, if it's a Schwarzer driving a Cadillac, it's like got, you know, the, uh, the tires are like bald and uh, half the body parts of the car are like dragging on a highway. Or Greg Reed. Oh, Greg Reed drives a Cadillac? Oh, who the hell is he kidding? Is he kidding anybody? No. No, he ain't kidding anybody. Oh, man. Greg Reed drives a Cadillac. If, if you look up the expression, the word wannabe in the dictionary, it's not a word, I guess, but well, who knows, maybe it is. But just look it up in the Webster Dictionary. Right next to wannabe will be a picture of Greg Reed, that geek who changed his kid's hair color. Here's Miami. Hello. Yeah, Neil? Yes, sir. How you doing, man? What's Great. Up? Listen, I'm from Jacksonville, and I'm in Miami for the holidays. Thanks for that good pounding last year, sir. These guys uh, needed that. Man, I'm a Dolphin fan. Oh, I've been like a I Dolphin said. fan for 25 years. Like I said, too bad about that game last year, 62-7. to 7. But anyway. This is what sucks. What yeah. sucks is I come down here. And then I find out the game's not even televised. Right. This is embarrassing, man. I cannot believe the Dolphin fans have not supported their team. I know. This is embarrassing, man. Wanstead has done a wonderful job. Right. Nobody thought this team and was going to be And don't, don't forget the good Jewish boy, Jay Fiedler. Don't forget about him. That surprised everybody. I can, let me yeah. tell you something. I am so pissed off. I can't believe it, man. This is embarrassing. I just want to say Wanstead and the Dolphins, they've been kicking butt. They've been doing awesome. Yeah. I'm proud of them, and I don't care what anybody says. And if you, listen, and if you listen to the morons that call the sports shows on this radio station, they've been taking a lot of crap from these people, too, who don't appreciate a good effort because these people don't even understand understand what they're talking about. I'm telling you, man, the fans suck here. I've yeah. come to the games. I've driven all the way from Jacksonville to come to the games. The jet, just to see the Dolphins play in, jet, in Jacksonville cost $68 yeah. a ticket. All right? Our tickets are nowhere near that for crappy seats. I'm telling you, this is embarrassing, man. This is embarrassing. Yeah, but you come to the land where we see we're beyond embarrassment now. After this last election, I think that was uh, that was the end for us. Nothing that can happen now will embarrass us anymore. Man, I think, let me tell you something. I think the Dolphin fans need to stand behind their team. This is embarrassing. Well, they are so standing behind. There's more Dolphin fans they're not out supporting there. They're standing they behind. to Miami to see this game yeah. and some of these losers that live here. Okay, well, I'll see you back hey, in Jacksonville. Hey, one question, on. man. Yes. One question before I go. Yes, sir. Hey, man, what did Jesus ever do to you, man? I beg your pardon? I said, what did Jesus ever do to you, What man? did Jesus ever do? Yeah. Why do you hate the guy so bad? I never met him. <laughs> Crappy you too, man. Okay, have a great life. Okay. <laughs> Go back to Jacksonville, okay, with your Jesus bullcrap. Another one of those Jesus Christer guys. What did Jesus ever do to you? I'll tell you one thing that the Lord didn't give to you, sir, and that was a sense of humor.
1118560 WQAM Best of Neil. We're taking your requests all day long. 5670560, pound 560 on your AT&T wireless line. Reminding you our Subaru VRX Hoops Hysteria Contest continues at WQAM.com. Log on and start making your selections for round three of the MCC NCAA tournament. Prizes will be given away after each round, and the grand prize winner walks away with, that's right, $1,000, courtesy of Subaru and Sports Radio 560 QAM. And hey, while you're there, check out our NASCAR Insider page. Food drops keep falling on my head. And I just can't wait to get back on my own clean bed. Not that I complain, but my girlfriends are falling and the food drops keep falling. That kind of thing is gonna happen when you swing. A consequence of a crowded mattress in the orgy room. Two drops keep falling on my head. Took my girlfriend to the swing club for a good time, but instead, now she's mad at me. So, next time I better just bring my umbrella, and that should keep the screw dropped off her and me. <laughs> Something bothering you, Mr. Spock? May I say that I have not thoroughly enjoyed serving with humans. I find their illogic and foolish emotions a constant irritant. Unlike you, we humans are full of unpredictable emotions. Love. Tenderness. Yes. Don't be afraid. Here's my hand. Hold on. You are beautiful. More beautiful than any dream of beauty I've ever known. What is your point, Mr. Spock? Oh, yeah. What did you say? Not your mind. The prospect that you're quite attracted to you, moment ago. You don't really want to hurt me, do you? Put that thing away. No, I don't think so. No! I can't! Hey, listen quick. No! Ah! I'm in my second officer, Spock. Ah! Possible we may have hit the wrong entry point. Yes. Very well, Captain. Try again. This is you. What are you waiting for? Hurry. If you'll excuse the intrusion, Captain. Oh! Marry the hatchet. An appropriate choice of terms, Captain. Oh! Oh, I feel so weak. I'm really glad you must have over. I've enjoyed it. Believe me, Mr. Spock. It was painful. In more ways than one. I don't know why I have not been infected. Thank you, Mr. Spock. From both of us. Coming soon from directors George Lucas and Francis Ford Coppola. The newest chapter in the Star Wars saga. When the heads of two families collide in space, they become Star Wars. With an all-star cast, James Earl Jones as Darth Vito and Marlon Brando as obi Wop Kenobi. You should not have come back, old man. Your powers are weak. You can't win, Doc. If you strike me down now, my family will become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. When I left you, I was the winner. Now I am the master. Only a master of evil, Doc. Al Pacino as Han Solo Mio. Come on, come on, Greedo. You want some of me? Come on, you're going to mess with the best. Say hello to my little friend. Sylvester Stallone as Chewbacca. Oh, man, no. Hey, yo, honey, you know what you're doing. Hey, what are you talking about? Hey, what are you talking about? Hey, what are you talking about? With new feature footage never before seen of the ominous Don Java.
Ah, di bambino, il casimara con blastare, gli stanno a fila grido fetaggia. <laughs> you must know how come Han Solo Mio turned Greedo into an egg and potato pie. Tony Danza as Luca Skywalker. Yoda? Leia? Jonathan? Luca, my son, you must go to the Dago Bar. Dago Bar? Is that in the swamp? No, it's a bar on 7th Street where all the guys hang out. You must go there and learn the ways of... The sauce. The sauce? The sauce is what gives a Jedi his powers, his energy. Where is the sauce? It's in my kitchen, it's in your kitchen. It flows between the sausage and the ravioli, the pasta and the meatballs. It combines everything together. With special guest appearance by Joe Pesci as Princess Leone. Let me understand something. You're going to rescue me? I need your help. It's bad enough I got a stand over here with my f***ing raisin bunch in my hair. And I need your f***ing help. You're going to come in and take a hold of my situation? I don't f***ing think so. Because you, your friend, and your walking f***ing have it over here. I can't help. Thank you. 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 Thank you haven't seen anything until you've seen everything. And don't miss the final chapter of the saga, Return of the Judai. Coming soon to a temple near you. May the sauce be with you.
I'm dying over here. I'm my own grandpa. I'm my own grandpa. It sounds funny, I know, but it really is so. Yes, I'm my own grandpa. Many, many years ago when I was 23, I was married to a widow who was pretty as could be. This widow had a grown-up daughter who had hair of red. My father fell in love with her and soon they two were wed. This made my dad my son-in-law and changed my very life. For my daughter was my mother because she was my father's wife. To complicate the matter, even though it brought me joy, I soon became the father of a bouncing baby boy. My little baby then became a brother-in-law to dad and soon became my uncle, though it made me very sad for if he was my uncle then that also made him brother of the widow's grown-up daughter who of course was my stepmother father's wife then had a son who kept them on the run and he became my grandchild because he was my daughter's son my wife is now my mother's mother and it makes me blue because although she is my wife she's my grandmother too if my wife is my grandmother then I'm her grandchild and every time I think of it it nearly drives me wild for now I have become the strangest case you ever saw as husband of my grandmother I am my own grandpa I'm my own grandpa I'm my own grandpa it sounds funny I know but it really is so yes I'm my own grandpa there was an old farmer who lived out here. He sat in the meadow just shaking his fist at some boys who were down by the creek. Their feet in the water, their hands on their marbles and playthings and at half past four. There came a young lady, she looked like a pretty young creature. She sat on the grass, she pulled up her dress and she showed them her rumbles and laces and white gloves. Be done. She said she was learning a new way to bring up her children so they would not spit. While the boys in the barnyard were shoveling refuse and litter from yesterday's hut. While the girl in the meadow was rubbing her eyes at the fellow down by the dock. He looked like a man with a sizable home in the country with a big fence out front. If he asked her politely, she'd show him her little pet dog who was subject to fit. And maybe she'd let him grab hold of her small tender hands with a movement so quick. And then she'd bend over and suck on his candy so tasty made of butterscotch. And then he spread whipped cream all over her cookies that she had left out on her shelf. If you think this is dirty, you can go yourself. Today I'd like to read a letter that I'm writing to all white people today in the spirit of unity and understanding. Dear white folk, couple of things you ought to know. When I'm born, I'm black. When I grow up, I'm black. When I get sick, I'm black. When I go out in the sun, I'm black. When I go out in the cold, I'm black. When I get scared, I'm black. And when I die, I'm still black. But you, my white man, when you're born, you are pink. When you grow up, you are white. When you get sick, you are green. When you go out in the sun, you go red. And when you get cold, you turn blue. When you get scared, you turn yellow. And the happiest time of my life is when white people die, you turn purple. And you got the damn nerve to call me colored. You know, Fat Rich reminds me of my mother. And now the first question, as determined by a flip of a coin, it goes to Vice President Gore. Vice President Gore, you have questioned whether Governor Bush has the experience to be President of the United States. What exactly do you mean? Do do boom 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 boom
Is it fair to say, okay, the differences between Vice President Gore and George W. Bush, Governor Bush, are the following. You are for doing something on the consumption end, you're for doing something on the production and uh, drilling. Let me clarify. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> yep. Governor Bush, if elected president, would you try to overturn the FDA's approval last week of the abortion pill? Are you 486? Oh, God. 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 Governor, we'll, well, I will go to the Supreme Court question in a moment, but make sure I understand your position on RU486. If you're elected president, will you not through appointments to the FDA? You wouldn't support legislation to overturn this? <laughs> Not zero for nothing. Thank you, Governor Bush, Vice President Gore. See you next week. And for now, from Boston, I'm Jim Merrill. Thank you and good night. It's the Bush Brothers Comedy Hour with George and Jeff special guest, Rush Limbaugh, Dr. Laura Schlesinger, Dr. Joe, Dr. Pepper, Dr. Joyce Brothers, Dr. Joseph Mendela, Joe Verbal, Uncle Joe Dollar, Children Yarnell, Good Golly Sucrose Dolly, and the Trip Lot Pop Pop Dancers. And here they are, the Bush Brothers. Thank you very much. Thank you. We thought we'd start off with a little song by the Mills Brothers. I think you'll all remember it. Ready, George? Junior, you ready? Um. One, two. One, two, three. Up a lazy river in the old mill run. Lazy river in the noonday sun. Linger a while in the shade of a tree. Throw away your troubles and dream with me. Up the lazy river where the robin song. Wake the morning. George, why, why'd you stop singing? Don't get it. Don't get what? I think it's funny. I mean, like, I mean, I like the Mills Brothers. Um, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, they were brothers, but... What? Well, they were like, um, Negroes. Now look, George, Daddy originally wanted us to do it in blackface, remember? Yeah. We used to do it in the living room when dignitaries came over, right? Okay, but I guess remember when you delivered Florida to me? Yes. I only did what's right. I think since I'm president and all... Yeah. I think you could deliver better material than this. <laughs> Junior, let's finish the song, shall we? But you did... Did you... George, uh, let's finish the song. Um... That, that, uh, okay. Up a lazy river, how happy we'll be. Up a lazy river. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. God bless you. The Bush Brothers Comedy Hour is brought to you by Amico, Sid Rock, Cobalt, Shell, Amarada Hemp, Rudolph Hemp, Alger Hip, and Exxon. Put an oily duck in your tent on my QAM. Great article by Jim Mullen in New Times. Thanks, Julio, for faxing this over to me because I did forget to pick up New Times on the way downstairs by the elevators, by the elevators that don't work, that is. But anyway, 
Marlins cut a deal, and once again, the pathetic public doesn't have a clue what just blew by. The cynicism continues, aided and abetted by the hypocritical Alex Ping, uh, Pinga Pequena. Great. I'm not going to read it on the air because I'm not, I'm not reading stuff on the air until after the new year, until after uh, Monday. Are we going to be here Monday? No. No. We've got lots of football for you on Monday. No, nobody in their right mind works on New Year's Day. I'll tell you that right now. So this is our last show of the year. It's our third anniversary on QAM, which means absolutely nothing to anybody here, including me, although Bluff's pretty uh, worked up about it. So we're just here to serve today, just help you make it through the day, get ready for the big uh, Panther Bruins game tonight under the new regime, the interim, temp- very temporary. Th- those guys in the morning, uh, do they have any clue whatsoever? No. None. Zero. Clueless, including Gildy. And then they got bow tie on there when I walked in this morning. They're just sucking and sucking and sucking on that big fat jowl of his, man. It's just uh, brutal. Here's a mobile in Bokeh. Hello. Hey, Happy New Year, Neil. Back to you, sir. Hey, all these snorers today, you should play the uh, free ticket lady card. Yeah, that's a good idea. Hey, listen, uh, uh-huh. I respect your, your opinion on sports a lot. I really do. Yeah. Uh, two questions. Thank God it's Number not a sports show, yes. <laughs> Number one, why do they keep the Murray brothers on so long? Me being a Flyer fan, we brought, when, when those guys left, we brought them the plane tickets down here. You don't, you, why don't you folks get it? Wayne is selling the team, and as a result, everything was in limbo, but because things got so bad, and the public became so agitated, and there got to be so much uh, psychosis about it, they could, really couldn't wait anymore. So this was a way to do an interim band-aid kind of a thing until they can complete the sale to try to pacify everybody and say, well, at least we're doing something, and that's why Tory is, oh, yeah, if these guys don't do this, and if you don't do that, which is all a lot of smoke, because he's, uh, you know, he's just a figurehead at this point. So they're still going to suck. Well, uh, you don't see any changes, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. Well, just because Dwayne Sutter is standing behind a bench, with all due respect to him, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but that's not the solution to their problem. Lack of talent. And you look up and down the roster, lack of talent, a lot of bad mistakes by the general manager. That's the problem. Well, they got that great Schwartz that we're playing for them. Yeah, that'll do it, yeah. Hey, and one more thing. Um, question, am I wrong? By the Dolphins not selling out, don't the Dolphins lose a lot of money from not getting the TV uh, time to add and all that money? No, the Dolphins, Dolphins don't get the TV money. They get the money for the broadcast rights from the NFL. I mean, Channel uh, 10, uh, you know, is just a network affiliate, but they don't lose any broadcast revenue rights. Okay, because I was, I was that, That's all in a lump. Wow, I, it's just a, it, it amazes yeah, and me. You know, but I'm, it I'm glad you mentioned that, though, because for years I, I supported the uh, owners with this blackout thing in the NFL, but with the kind of money the kind of trillion-dollar uh, monies that are being spent by the networks now to televise the NFL games, the idea that they black out games that aren't sold out is just a slap in the face to people everywhere. It's, it's unacceptable. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Why can't these, like, multi-millionaire, billionaire guys buy 50 tickets each or 100 tickets each and give them away to charity? No, nah, the whole idea of the blackouts is unacceptable. Once upon a time, you know, when, when, when the in-house attendance was very important to, to the economy of the league, then I could understand it. But nowadays, it doesn't really make all that much difference. What's important is that gigantic uh, TV broadcast rights they get. Hey, happy forum. And back to you. Happy summer. Bye. <laughs> yeah, come on. Quit, quit bleeding the money out of the public already. We're, give something back to the fans. No. Come on. Just one time. No. You bastards. You pricks. Here's a lady in Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Great. I just want to say happy, uh, happy New Year. Same to you. And um, I, I didn't get to. Uh, you weren't taking any calls the other day on um, the charity, and I just want to say you guys need to continue that. You know. Yeah. That's great work. But uh, on this subject here, these refugees, man. You uh, can't... That, that's the subject. Is the refugees? Was I yeah, didn't realize you, you that was the subject. You just can't get a decent meal. You know, yeah. Miami it has just turned into a uh, yeah, just a little freak show. Uh huh. You know, and uh, this this whole voting thing, you know. Yeah. It, it's awful. It's awful. What do you think about that? I say, watch out for the freaks, sweetheart, and go straighten yourself out. Get some help. She was right about that, though. It's a freak show, oh! and there's no extra charge. How do you like that? So instead of going to Fort Myers to watch some stupid football game tomorrow, let's all pack into a bunch of buses and go to Miami and watch a freak show. Oh! Yeah. Here's a mobile in in Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, I uh, love your show, and Happy New Year. Same to you. I wanted to say uh, I've listened to the last couple of Dolphin broadcasts, and yes. there was some funny stuff there. Yeah. I don't know if you heard during the Tampa game, there was uh, many references to the players trying to keep their hands on the wet, slippery balls. Yeah. And then during the last uh, last one, uh, when Manage got locked in the closet, that was I'll, some I'll of the funniest in a, in stuff. Another bizarre twist, Bill. 
I have been banished. I've been put in a closet outside the locker room, <laughs> and I can't get out of it. <laughs> yes. Well, if we you have gotta someone that. listening in Miami who might have a connection to the uh, stadium here, please call and tell them to let Jim Mandich out of the closet. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. See, I'll have that a great you okay, the door, pal. Jim, trying to get out? Yes. Oh, okay. It is. Well, feel free to yell for help at any time. And the good news is uh, Mandich is out of the closet. All right. Although I thought that happened the day that he put the picture of the uh, quarterback from Michigan up there on the uh, Tommy, uh, what's his name? What was his name? See, out of sight, out of mind. What was his name, Joe, the quarterback from It's right back here. Brady? Tommy Brady. Nice going. He was one of the Brady bunch. Uh-huh. Five, six, seven, oh, five. I think that uh, basically what it boils down to, this Seventh Heaven show on Warner Brothers, this is the Brady bunch for adults, you know, for horny adults. And we always did wonder what Florence Henderson used to do with all that Western oil, you know? Here's Parkland. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Long time listener, first time caller. All right. All right. I got to tell you something. Yes. You talk about uh, too many old people in South Florida? Yes. I work at a major supermarket right next to Winmore uh-huh. in Coconut Creek. Oi. The Walking Dead. Yeah. It's terrible. Something happens. I think you reach a, a certain age, and all uh, decency and manners and politeness just goes. Only here. I've seen the most miserable people in my entire life, and, and I have a pretty good disposition. You have to sit back and kind of chuckle inside mm-hmm. because it's, just, it's miserable. It's horrible. If they want to suck the life right out of you. Yeah, they want to suck it. Anyway, yeah, right. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Okay, thanks, pal. And uh, I love listening to you. Thanks a lot for being there. Have a happy. Bye. Have a happy new millennium, baby, because that's what it is. It's coming. If you thought the new millennium was last year, you're wrong. As usual, you're wrong, and you got sucked in by all that media hype. But that's okay. Made a lot of money for a lot of people, and that's what the economy. It's good for the economy. That's what it's all about. It's all request day. We've got lots of tickets for all the sporting events over the weekend, so just call in, just ask, and uh, we'll rip that you were an ass, huh? Now they'll be asking you watch. Backstreet Boys tickets for that big concert coming up. we got tickets for the A1 concert. Yeah, they're still doing it. They still look pretty good, too, them anyway. So how's that lunch coming? we got the Jeff Cohen is on the way. It's on the way. And what was that caustic thing you said about the hardness of my pasta? I didn't say sh. Yeah, I, I heard that. heard about it. You're not fooling anybody, Jeff. You're not fooling anybody, mister, with that ponytail and that Vespa. Hi, Felicia. Jeannie, I love your dress. And your hair looks so shiny and manageable. Are you still shampooing with head and shoulders? <laughs> Gosh, Dick, I stopped using head and shoulders a long time ago. I mean, honestly, who grows hair on their shoulders anyway? <laughs> yeah, right. So what are you using now? Well, well, it's like head and shoulders, only without all those additives. It's just called head. Let's tell them about it, girls. Wow, where can I get head? Lots of places, Chip. You can stop by my place later, and I'll be happy to give you some head. In 15 minutes, I'll have you shampoo. Food, styled, and blow dry. Gee, you don't miss a lick, do you? Head sounds great, but is it expensive? Not at all, chick. My brother says there are places downtown where you can get head for less than ten dollars. Golly, at that price, everyone should be getting head. That's right, chick. When you say head, you set a mouthful. Hi, I'm Dr. Raymond Pilati. I'm from the oil industry. Here to tell you why you should get head. First, it lubricates each limp hair follicle, leaving an erect, glistening shaft. Then the scalp's natural oils are sucked out of the root, leaving your hair soft, shiny, and exhausted. Nothing does the job like head. Great! Can I get head from my hairdresser, Bruce? Probably, but you might want to try your girlfriend first. <laughs> what hair with lots of volume? Nothing gets it up like head. Available at a price you won't find hard to swallow. And it's going down every day. <laughs> Honey, we're out of shampoo. Can you go out and get some head? What did you say? I said I want you to go out and get head. Oh, thank you, sweet Jesus. <laughs> I'm going down, down. <laughs> and head makes a great holiday gift. Last Christmas, my wife gave me some head. 
Then I gave her a pearl necklace. I've never seen her so choked up. My girlfriend used to give me head, and then we got married. Now I'm lucky if I get Jurgen's lotion in a National Geographic. <laughs> Head shampoo. Come on, give it a shot. My hair looks great. <laughs> Use a nap. Greg hates you. The Neil Rogers Show will not be on today. Instead, run a gambler sport hole radio, 560 WQAM, in its continuing effort to cater to all three of you slack jawed lifeless automatons, is proud to present Greg Reed washing his socks. <laughs> I love these socks. My wife got me these socks. My favorite kind. You know, dark brown with the gold diamonds down each side of the ankle. Gotta get one, get that one a good scrub. And down by the where my my wife fixed the hole because I didn't trim my toenails that. <laughs> Uh, i got to start on the other one. Oh, no. What is it, Dove? What, Dove? What's the matter? Oh, we have no tumblers. Oh, why did you take me alive? You didn't even scare me. Can't you see how is he? Now, be a good little press uh, director and go back to your office. Oh, okay. Why, there's I'll nothing to worry about. Back inside and, and schedules. <laughs> hey, maybe Clear Channel will buy it. Oh, just in sun. Was a hero. Loved by millions. Across the land, and went to visit his ex-wife. Now she was hanging with another man. The juice went home now for a knife and ski mask and a pair of gloves, and back he went. She was tipping her friends the waiter and giving more than fifteen percent. Well, you couldn't take it. Started slicing and dicing, don't you know? Was that the airport before they fell? She made a touchdown in old Chicago. I checked in that V Alibi Hotel. But the LAGA, well, he flagged OJ for illegal procedure <clears throat> with a knife. That's the prison yard penalty. He said with conviction. That's what you get when you hack the wife out on the LA freeway in a getaway Bronco, pressing something to his skull, wishing he was dead. But it was a cell phone, no, not a pistol. Suicide by Suma, deep in his head. Well, he finally got a mock. Now it's up to the jury, but he will surely be in jail for life. I'm out of people they all say they feel bad for old Jay. They forget it ain't okay to hack the wire. Oh, 
think I'll turn on the old Rogers. Hold it right there, pal. Don't touch that dial. Oh, my God. It's sunny. It's Helen Dale fight to Sunny Revenge. Yeah, it looks like we got him. Thanks for the tip, Mrs. Aquacoid. You're welcome, Sonny. I mean, I knew he was a sick owl when I invented him the place. I mean, look at this. He even had this bill he was looking at. My God. The Ted Bundy picture. Looks like we stopped another future mass murderer Neil scumbag moron. The streets of Hell and Dale are safe again, thanks to you, Sonny. Just doing my job, Mrs. Aquacoy. By the way, I'm going to need your name and phone number. We contact you later. Let me get you my card. Oops, I dropped my pipe. Say, what's that that fell out of your purse? Oh, my God. If you play Hank Goldberg again, I'm going to fucking throw up. John Paul is coming around. Let's go watch his play put it down. Let's watch his crew go round town. In my grand town as we yell. Hi, hope. We yell. Hi, hope. I say I'm so excited because it's my hope. So if you on his but now don't go messing around. Can you flex to get down? Look out now, the boat is coming around. Look out now, the boat is coming around. Look out now, the boat is coming around. Kneel down. When you get there, better be wary. Down in Cuba, things can get hairy. Everyone knows that it's very scary. Then say a Hail Mary when you come. Bye, folks. You'll get by, folks. Please say hi to the big guy in the sky, folks. The deaf, the blind, the guy who looks on a catch of us. Won't you say as a man? Hey, you Cuban dog, get off of the grass. Hey, you Cuban dog, get off of the grass. Hey, you Cuban dog, get off of the grass. Real fast. Don't know why he's saying hello. And he's shaking hands with Castro. Everyone knows about Castro. Boot your grundy asshole, and they say, Why, Pope, don't be a dope. I think he should be swinging from a tight rope. So when you get to Cuba now, don't be stupid now. When you meet with Fidel, tell that asshole that he's going to hell. Asshole, you are going to Tell that asshole that is going to help. Farewell. In nomine patre et filii et spiritus sancti, why the hell did I come to Cuba? Hey, baby! Wanna go? Yeah, hop into my Lincoln. Oh, it's a nice car, baby. You bet your ass. Hey, 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 hey yo, Jibo, man, get it time. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, okay, man. Hey, hey, what's that? that um, it's never, it's, uh... A dog? Oh, no, man, it's Hooker Bitch Barbie. Hooker Bitch Barbie? That's right. It's Hooker Bitch Barbie with all the fly accessories. Fishnet stockings, three-inch spike heels, genuine needle marks on the arm, and removable teeth. Oh, man, I forgot to retake this. I put on the red city skirt, and I slapped the roof all the way down the bitch. Booyah, man, that bitch is down, T. Oh, man, take off that mini skirt, bitch. Hooker, bitch, Barbie. And coming soon, Andre the Talking Pimp. What? Bitch, get your ass in the car. I say Bobby Dollars. 
560 WQAM, your sport whole-minded station, presents the Neil Rogers Show. Neil won't be in again today, so that we may provide you with more titillating entertainment, well-suited for this area and the management state of mind. Live from the right side of the grove, it's Miami Hurricane Girls Dodgeball. Sport O Radio, 560 WQAM. Thanks the listening audience for making us number one from 10 to 2. To show our gratitude, we'll punish you with another live broadcast of the Miami Hurricane. As they go against the Miss Tiffany's Montessori class in a rough and tumble sandcastle building competition. Only on 560 WQAM. Took a call from the Monic. They say the future be right for me. Now I can't get no job. Cause I don't got no liberal feet. I was talking like an old Negro. Demonic taught me how this way. Now I can't do nothing. But my heritage say that's okay. Change my name to shoot road. Drive a deuce and a quarter in a Cadillac. I remember when I was stealing all the white man's cars, hanging outside the Belvedere bar, crying the blues about poverty. White devils got no job for me in time. Forty bonics will give my life a change now. Got to go and sell no crack cocaine, crack cocaine, crack cocaine, crack cocaine, crack cocaine, crack cocaine, crack cocaine. Crackle King, Crackle King. Lordy, what a boring song. Your body makes me sound funny. Got nothing to do with literacy. Now I got to make more money. Labor food sounds good to me. I got plenty of nothing. Your body can't get me anywhere. Maybe I'll mug an old white bitch, steal a purse and pull her hair. Then I'm gonna take some money, buy a stereo and a fridge there. I remember when I was stealing all the white man's cars, hanging outside the Belvedere bar, buying the blues out of the deep. White there was got no job for me and cry. Thought Ebonics would give my life a change now. <laughs> Got to go and sell more crack okay. Crack okay, 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 crack Hello, I was calling about the wabbits you have for sale in the paper. Okay. What kind of wabbits are they? Okay, I have some uh, lops. Yeah. And I have some lops, some spotted lops, and some solid color lops. Oh, wonderful. And I have a, a straight ear doe, and I have two dwarfs. A little dwarf? They're small rabbit. Oh, okay. Uh, we have a farm. Uh huh. And we like to play with the wabbits on the farm. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have any, uh, like, little wabbit handcuffs? Any what? Little handcuffs for a wabbit. Handcuffs? Yes. I'm sorry, I never heard of them. What, uh... Well, you, we, we use them when we hunt them on the farm. We like to hunt the wabbits. And we take them and nail them to a tree by their ears and then skin them alive. Uh... <laughs> There was. Hello? And no, I, I, if, if that's what you're going to do at these rabbits, sir, I couldn't say you a rabbit. Well, we, we have a little game we play called All Rabbits Must Die. No, sir, no, sir, no, sir. Uh, I wouldn't say you a rabbit uh, for $50. I like to hunt the rabbit. 
Well, that's okay. You you go out in the wild and you hunt rabbits, but these aren't for kill. I'd like to put them in a little pen and then hunt them down unmercifully. No, sir, I'm sorry. Couldn't say you a rabbit. Sometimes we even spear them through the head with a rusty water. <laughs> First you get down on your knees, fiddle with your rosaries, bow your head with great respect and Can you flex, can you flex, can you flex? Do whatever steps you want it, you have cleared them with the pontiff. Everybody say his own curio, lay his own to the band again, right? In line in that professional, step into that small professional. They're the guy who's got religion. I'll tell you if your sin's original. If it is, try playing it safer. Drink the wine and chew the wafer. Two, four, six, eight. Time to transubstantiate. Don't get down upon your knees. Fiddle with your rosaries. Bow your head with great respect and take a cross on your abdomen. When in Rome, do like a Roman. Ave Maria, chief, good to see you. Get the static and the body dramatic and the doing the panic and the Are you losing your hair? Is that ball spot getting bigger? Has your hair been looking thinner? Here's Dr. Gordon, the medical director of the Hair and Skin Treatment Center in New York. It's an exciting news. What makes people lose their hair is a bad body chemical called dihydrotestosterone, commonly known as DHT. In our center, we have developed Avacor, an all-natural herbal treatment that stops DHT from attacking your hair follicle. You start with growing new hair in the balding area, guaranteed. In five years of like John Rocker, if I wind up losing to George W. Bush, he might just go all the counting's been suspended, Put your ballot down. all my votes taken away. No well, I feel like I've been rear-ended, <gasps> and upon my head there sits a Christmas play. Maybe it's time to a board. Number 13. This sucks. At 560 WQM, don't be stepping on me, Al, okay? Don't be stepping on nobody else for a long time. Our poll so far today, the biggest problem with South Florida is 76 votes on there as I speak. Too many refugees, 27. What a surprise that is. Why don't you just come out and say it the way you mean, huh? Too many freaking Cubans. That's what you want to say, isn't it? Uh You Cuban haters. They just haven't seen the right ones. That's their problem. Too many refugees, 27. Crooked politicians, 20. Too many old farts. That was my vote, 17. And apathetic citizens, a dozen. A dirty dozen. 76 votes. Here's Miami. Hello. Miami. Neil, you there? Yes, sir. I'm here. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, okay. I just called Pro Player Stadium. Yeah. There's 2,200 tickets left. We still have time. Yeah, Maybe. right. Uh-huh. Maybe. 2,200, my ass. Just thought I'd let you know. Yeah, okay. Thanks for the bull crap. Here's uh, the news from over the West Coast from our friends at uh, 770 over there in Fort Myers. Our friends. Are they our friends? <laughs> anyway, it says the sports bars in the North Fort Myers or in Naples, whatever that means. Swamp Buggy Lounge, which the lady, I guess, no, she called about Stevie Tomato Sports Page. 11491 U.S. 41 in Fort Myers. Or corner of Shirley Street and Pine Ridge Road, there's also a Stevie Tomato Sports page in Naples. And Swamp Buggy Lounge, corner of 9th Street and U.S. 41 in downtown Naples. So there you go. What better way to spend a great weekend than in Naples or Fort Myers watching the Dolphins and the Colts? Can you think of any better way to spend your... Huh? Seriously, that's fantastic. Go over there and pick your nose for a couple hours. Do a little... Uh, take your corn cob pipe. Or just take your corn cob. Now that we're picking over on you people on the West Coast, are we picking on them? Uh-huh. Sure. Why not? we got to feel better than somebody. When you live here in South Florida on the Southeast Coast, you have to find some people that you feel much better about then, and they're, they're it. People in Tampa, we feel better than them. Uh-huh. Clearwater, uh-huh. oh, yeah. Dunedin? How about Clewiston? Here's a mobile in Clewiston. Hello. Hey, sir. How are you doing? Okay. 
it's good to talk to you. This is the first time I ever had a chance. All and right. boy, did you play a good segue to what I wanted to say about the election down in Miami. It's too bad that you even have voter fraud all the time down there, and you want to blame it on the Republicans when it's a Democratic area. Yeah. I mean, come on. And then you blame the Supreme Court. Sir, and we're not talking about that. It's all over. Nobody's blaming anybody. We're talking about moving onward and upward. Can you do that, or is that not? Don't oh, you I can to... move on and outward. Okay, right? well, good. Move onward, upward, and outward, as in off the goddamn phone. Redneck. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you. Just like that great fax I had, which I already Schmidt canned, that that letter to the Herald about uh, what a great show it is on this end, and the callers, generally speaking, they're not up to the standard. They're not up to snuff. They may be doing some snuff, but they're not up to snuff. They just don't care enough to send their very best, or maybe they just don't have their very best, or maybe what we hear, maybe that is their very best, which I think is most likely. Don't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's their best. So that's why this show is a very accurate barometer of this town and what it's all about. That's why you had your alien, and that's why you had your bogus elections, because that's what we got here. That's why you got your unsold ball game tomorrow. So what are you bellyaching about? Well, you, you should come to expect it here. It's mediocrity is what we're all about. And since mediocrity is so popular in America, we ought to be a very popular place. In fact, that should be the American uh, ethic. Strive to be mediocre. Because life in America these days is a celebration of mediocrity. And if you don't believe me, just turn on your TV set. Anytime, any channel. Here's Carl Springs. Hello. Well, hi, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was really quick today. You know, I guess everyone's out buying those tickets. Yeah. You know, you said I hear the there's only four of them left. <laughs> yeah, I guess everyone took it a heart and they, when they they re you said boycott the Panthers, but uh, they got a little confused. I haven't gone to a game since uh, my uh, giant. I was a giant football fan. I paid seven hundred fifty dollars back in eighty six for the Super Bowl. Yeah. And I went. I was a fan and uh, and stuff. But down here, this isn't a football uh, town or anything. It's not an anything town. It's just it's, we're just here. This isn't a place where they care about sports, about politics. They're just here. They like the fact it's warm and uh, people generally leave them alone, and that's it. I mean, if there's a reason not to build shot. another, if there's a reason not to build another stadium, here it is. Right. If you're not going to support the supposedly football town's team, I want to tell you something. University. I'll say it again. The University of Miami played basketball two days ago. We carried that game just like the we're carrying this mm -hmm. afternoon. It said 1,300 people there. There were maybe were 300 people. This afternoon, maybe there will be 50 people there. What's the point? Why do we need a goddamn new arena so we can have yeah. more empty stadiums and arenas and keep wasting money? Absolutely. And as far as you, you hit it on the head as far as the NFL, I mean, it's all about television revenue. Anyway. Right. Just put the game on. Just put it on and stop, uh, stop uh, picking on the damn bastards out there. Put the game on. Let them enjoy it. Absolutely. Just one last thing. I know you're not talking about Bush. I'm not talking about the election. No. But he, a secretary, secretary of Defense, he picked the guy from the Nixon administration. No, from Ford. From Ford. Rumsfeld. There's are... nobody better? I, I hear Younger? that he's going to go back to Herbert Hoover's economic people pretty soon. <laughs> Have a great day, Pat. Thanks. Yeah. Back to Papa Bush and uh, Gerald Ford. Well, why not pick people from Jerry Ford's administration? He wants to, you know, have somebody just as dumb as he is help him out. Oh, it's scary. But let's not talk about that, okay? There's nothing we can do about it. Crying over spilt milk and uh, voided uh, uh, ballots and fixed elections. Nothing we can do about that now. Let's just keep moving onward and upward and put a big smile on your post. Do the best we can. Give out some free tickets. Here's Hialeah. Hello. Neil, it's Friday. Your show is still boring. Yeah, and you're still listening. Thank you very much. And you're still a pain in the ass. And go play with yourself again. Oh, it's a uh, rub raw? Sorry. Little Boys in Hialeah. That's the story. That's going to be one of the chapters of my book. Little Boys in Hialeah who use this show as a play toy. When their own play toy became Saw and uh, Saw and Roy. Here's Pembroke Pines. Hello. Saw and Roy. Roy. Yes, sir. Happy New Year, brother. Same to you. Listen, that that last guy from Hialeah, I recognize his voice from the bathroom at the uh, the uh, Swamp Buggy Lounge. Yeah. No, actually, he's from the tea room at J C Penney's in Hialeah. He's one of the Glory Hole people. You got it uh -huh. exactly. But I'm through uh, patronizing and paying for Hyzinga. That other asshole that wants a baseball stadium, yeah. I'm done with it. Right. I got 60 inch cool. TV, satellite, cable, the whole nine. I'm not going anymore. I'm not going to do it. I don't blame you. I'm through with it. People, uh, you know, after after it uh, quits feeling good, stop being raped. That's my suggestion. And you know the tempo of the town, and you're right on top of it. Twenty three thousand empty seats tomorrow. Nobody wants to go. Twenty three thousand. Oh, what was it? How many empty seats is there tomorrow? I just got up. 12,000. 12,000 empty seats tomorrow. So we're right on top of it. Okay, pal. Everybody Have a great start. life. Hey, could I get one request? Yes, sir. The bridge tender. No. 
stupid idiotic jerk. That's enough. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? All right. Look, I got a couple of comments. Yeah. First of all, I used to listen to 1700, the fan. Oh, now up to two of them, huh? Yeah, it's too bad. No, it's not too like, bad. It was a piece of crap. Um, you know, sometimes it's better than your station. It was the worst gar no, it was never better than this radio station. It was the worst garbage I ever heard in my life. I turned it on twice. I never heard such amateur hour. There are there are kindergarten radio stations in America that are better than that was. Uh, my second comment is There's a bunch is of about, overgrown adults uh, playing radio. My second comment is about uh it's too many old people. Yeah. And it's not just that they're here, it's they're sitting here driving cars, causing accidents. Uh I can't take that. And my third comment is yes, you have dolphin tickets. Yeah. Can I have some? Sure, go ahead. They got uh, 12,000 at the gate G right now. Head right over to PP Park. They got all you want. They'll fill up your pocket with them and take whatever money you got. See, I got a message for some of you Schwarzers out there. See, the fan, they had about 50 people listening. They had the board ops from here and about 30 Schwarzers out there who all they knew was ball games. I, I, you know, it's a new year coming. And if you're gonna if you're gonna make a difference, if anything in life means more than a stupid ball game to you, then learn how to read, learn how to vote, you know these things, and forget about ball games, forget about glorifying all these illiterate jocks because uh, that's not where it's at. That ain't where it's at. Okay, get with it. Get with the program. Start being productive instead of so like reproductive. You get my drift? Here's a mobile in Hollywood. Hello. Hey, good morning. How are you? Yes, sir. Doing? Buenos dias. It's amazing, you know, uh, you must have said to 80 different people yesterday that you had no Dolphin tickets and they still keep asking. I have no tickets for anything. I said I have it's, my own tickets, the Panther tickets, that's a, and, and they still, as soon as they hear tickets, that's the magic word. Uh, can I talk about hockey for a second? Sure. I just wanted to ask, did you happen to see that fight at the end of that Kings game last night when that guy got laid out? No. Oh, my God, the place got so, so they had to carry him off. I saw plenty of the uh, Atlanta uh, Rangers game. Though. Boy, Atlanta's really playing great, and the Rangers stink the joint out. They were born like crazy there at the Garden. It was, I loved it. Oh, I wish I would have seen that. Oh, I missed it. Four to one. Uh, they, just, they kicked their ass. Right. Uh, can I get a shameless report, maybe? Yes, sir. Um, peeking through the keyhole? Okay. Thanks, buddy. You got it, pal. Have All a happy right. new year. Uh, you too. Bye-bye. Okay. Well, I'm not playing you too, though, under any circumstances. Peeking through the keyhole, which used to be one of uh, Joe's favorites. Along with the, what was the other one? Oh, yeah, Child uh, Pilot. Peeping through the keyhole, watching mom and dad. Peeping through the keyhole, the most fun we ever had. Mom and dad were playing tag right there on the bed. Mommy used her boobies as a pillow for daddy's head. Mommy's head was bobbing. She almost got whiplash. I don't know what she was drinking, but she got a milk mustache. Peeping through the keyhole, ain't sure what I see. But I sure do like it more than anything on TV. Mom and Dad were hooked together like my Lincoln logs. Last time I saw something like that, Mom was yelling at the dog. Dad was breathing heavy. Mom was on her knees. He must have had a boo-boo cause she kissed him where he pees. Squirt, squirt. Peeping through the keyhole, watching mom and dad. Peeping through the keyhole, the most fun we ever had. But we watched a little longer, and I started to get sick. If daddy's name is Elmer, why mom asked for Dick? Daddy groaned and his eyes rolled back. Mommy wanted more. She went back on top of him, but all he did was snore. Peeping through the keyhole as the minutes pass. I can't wait to drive this out on some girl in my class. All right. I can't wait to drive this out on some girl in my class. 560 QM. How's that poll coming? A lot of votes on there. 106 already. The biggest problem with South Florida is too many refugees. 39. Crooked politicians. 26. Too many old farts. 24. Apathetic citizens, 17. See, they're not going to say apathetic citizens because that would be like a commentary about themselves. Are they going to say that? No. No. Oh, Jesus, are you f***ing kidding me? You guys, I'm my best friends. To take and things. We've always been together. We're full of a kind. Having fun all day. Piling around and laughing away. Just best friends. Best friends are we. I love you, guys. Hello, Neil. Um, I would like to ask you a question. Um, my son was watching your program. On the um on Whammy on Miami, the date was the um fifteenth, and um I would like to know if you're some kind of um antichrist or something 
Because now my son wants to worship the devil because he thinks he's cool. And he also wants to dress as ladies and, and put lipstick on now. I don't know if the whole channel 69 is the Antichrist channel. Um, please, I'm really concerned. And I would like to know if you're the Antichrist. Thank you. And please, if I see you somewhere, I wouldn't even stop and give you water because you now you turn my son into a faggot and you made my son the, the Antichrist. Thank you. And have a nice day. For God's sake, all I want is the telephone number of the card, telephone card that you are advertising the, on your show. I've been calling different people different times for the last half an hour. Can I speak to someone? Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I was listening to uh, Jim Mandich today on the uh, radio, and he made some uh, very rude, rude uh, comments about Frank Sinatra. Uh, I'm, I don't know if you heard the program. But I think you ought to look into it and have uh, uh, Mr. Mandich make an apology, what he said about Mr. Sinatra and the uh, Viagra pills and not being able to close his coffin, I thought was totally, totally out of line. And uh, I can't believe that a man of his, his ability would even make those kind of remarks. So please see what you can do. Thank you. I've been listening to WQAM for, uh, gosh, oh, five to six years, and... Uh... I've watched the morning show evolve and everything, and um, I, I have a problem. I'm taking my kids to school, and these stinking commercials for uh, for the guy that c curses nasty, nasty things, and there's no warning. It just blurts out, you know, fuck you, and, 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 and you can hear the bleep, you can hear the fuck, you know, and you can hear the venom in his voice, and, and, you know, I don't have a chance to turn off my radio quick enough. Now, I heard it, you know, I had a problem again the other day. I can't explain that stuff to my kids. I, I, I've been listening to this station for a long time, and I think you're ruining it by infiltrating it with this nasty language. And uh, I don't know what I can do, but I, I just thought I'd better call, you know, and, and tell you. It's different with Hank. If Hank calls someone a son of a bitch, you just heard the guy act like a son of a bitch. And there's a reason for it. But the other guy with his fart and his asshole and... Just the way he curses, he's just ruining your first team. And um, I think Joe Rose should stand up and and, uh, and and get this all kicked off his program. Because there's a lot of people like me that um, that are you know have children, and uh, and I just don't like to hear someone say pissed off on my way to work. Pissed off gets me fired up when I hear someone say that, and, and I don't think it's appropriate. You know, if you're going to have a nasty little program in the middle of your day, leave it there. To make the other programs, it, it, it's demeaning to us, and it, and it really insults my intelligence. And, and, you know, if that's not clear, I don't know what it is. I'll talk to you later. Uh, I heard a uh, commercial on your station yesterday about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, something about uh, uh, a voice would uh, speak out. Uh, if someone approaches your uh, automobile and a, a voice of a big black something or other would come out and say, get away from my automobile or you're too close to my automobile, you big MF. I object seriously to profanity like that on on the radio. And I, I object to... The, to the profanity and that type of advertising. I believe in free speech, but that's too far. If I don't hear with reference to this complaint from you, I will send a letter to the uh, Federal Communications Commission because no kind of that, that kind of language is certainly not acceptable on on uh, public radio. It might be all right between individuals, but not on the radio. Uh, you can call me back on, uh, uh, Mr. Eisen, E-I-S-E-N. Thank you. Mr. Rogers, I think, is the perfect example of queer. What is his purpose for his new show, or his ugly show? He uses that word rectum every five minutes because that's what his brain is. He's never going to get past the South Florida audience because that, the town and the people that he's always complaining about are the only fools that would give him any time of day. 
Eventually, his range will drop so low, he'll have to readjust his rectum. Okay, the kind that you have talking on your sports department, I heard him the other day talking about the illegals that they're getting now to play uh, the game. And, you know, it's, it's very clear that he's talking about the Cuban illegals, okay? And uh, I want to tell you, that's, that's very shitty for someone to talk that way about illegals because, you know, him himself was not, is, not, is not a native here. He's not an American Indian. Everybody here has been an illegal sometime or the other, okay? And I don't like anybody talking like that about Cuban people, okay? Because, you know, he talks about like that, but Cuban people, how about his nationality? He's a piece of shit, okay? There's nothing but rob the fear the the poor people. That's how that's how you know that that's the American fucking way. So don't talk about Cuban people that way. Bunch of assholes, you guys. George or Mia, whoever it is, you can tell your big fat fucking atheist. He has no right to talk religion because he is a faggot and he is not representative of our thinking. Hey George, this is Tom Jekka. Did you just pass along to Neil and May? But the reason I called was that I thought maybe you could help me out. I've been trying to get those goddamn ratings. Now, if Lindsay's gone home sick, Josh Darris says he doesn't have the authority to give them to me. You know, call Greg Reed. I couldn't get him. So, you know, and then the, the last number they gave me was to call you. If somebody would get me the goddamn ratings, I'll, I'll pay the king his homage. Anyway, I'm only kidding, but uh, that, that is the problem, and I do want to do a story on him, and I'm just having trouble getting him. So I'll talk to you. Bye. <laughs> Ladies, are you tired of unwanted hands creeping into your panties? Unwanted hands creeping where they shouldn't be? Uh-huh. Then you need Vagomatic. Vagomatic? Yeah, it's the first feminine protection that really helps. Oh, Ron, yes, that feels good. Oh, baby, let's do it. Yeah, work it, sugar. No, wait. Come on, kitten. No. But I bought you dinner. Let me just unzip it. <laughs> You see, Vagomatic is fantastic. It really works. It's good against muggers, rapists, drunk husbands, priests, horny uncles, and Martina Navratilova. Let me just set this on Cherie. Oh, no! Vagomatic, and coming soon for the fellas, it's Cockatoo. Fantastic! Catholic? Questioning your faith? Feel you need divine intervention, or at least divine counsel? Well, now there's a hotline just for you. You have reached the Vatican. Today's moral issue, abortion. If you are pro-choice, plus one. Thank you. You are going straight to hell. Find out where the church stands on today's issues, and where you stand with the church. Today's moral issue, birth control. If you use contraceptives, plus one. Thank you. You are going straight to hell. Get the straight food from the pot of 24 hours. Hours a day, seven days a week. Call one nine hundred eight hope. Today's moral issue: premarital sex. If you engage in premarital sex, press one. Thank you. Have fun while you can, because you are going straight to hell. Call one nine hundred hope. That's one nine hundred h e y p o p e. Just fifty cents a minute. Remember, you can pay now or pay later. Are you worried about safe sex? Now there's a product that's safer than last year's Ziploc chastity belt. It's new Velcro condoms. Ow. Yes, Velcro condoms go on easy because Velcro sticks to any fuzzy part of your body. And you can relax because they're guaranteed not to flip, fling, or fly off. Best of all, when you're finished with a Velcro condom, they're so easy to remove. You're listening to the best of Neil Rogers on 560 QAM. 